would have thought that one of the best ways to preserve your privacy would be to hide behind an onion. And no, I'm of course not talking about growing a literal massive onion and standing behind it hoping that the smell will keep everyone else at bay. Today's episode is all about the onion router, better known as Tor, used by dissidents, uh, cyber criminals, and even ordinary folks the world over to keep their online activities away from the prying eyes of governments, advertisers, stalkers, or maybe even me. Dang it. But how does it work? Why is it considered so secure? And does it have any weaknesses? We touched on Tor in our video about the deep web and the dark web, which you can check out here, but we're gonna dive into it in a little bit more detail. Tor tries to anonymize your online activity by encasing your traffic in multiple layers of encryption, then sending it through a number of nodes that peel back those layers one at a time, hence the onion nickname. Each node only decrypts enough information in the packet to know where to send it next, so none of the nodes know both your identity and the identity of whatever website or server you are trying to connect to. This high level of encryption and repeated bouncing of network traffic makes Tor quite secure, but it isn't entirely foolproof. At some point, your data has to leave the Tor network to get to wherever it's going through something called an exit node, the very last Tor node that your data travels through. And when your data leaves an exit node and is sent to its destination, it is no longer necessarily encrypted. While it's very difficult still for the recipient to tell that it's you connecting, any unencrypted personal information can be read by both the operator of the exit node and whatever site it is that you're connecting to. In fact, a team of researchers several years ago harvested a bunch of unencrypted email addresses and passwords in this manner, even though they were sent over Tor. The fact that anyone can run an exit node also means that you don't know who could be looking at your information on the other end. To alleviate this problem somewhat, the Tor Foundation provides the Tor Browser for free, which is a modified version of Firefox that, among other things, attempts to use the encrypted HTTPS standard instead of regular HTTP for as much web activity as possible, and also disables certain plugins that can leak your IP address. Many plugins, and other applications for that matter, won't run over the Tor network by default and can thereby give away your identity even if your other traffic, your normal web browsing traffic, is going through Tor. It is possible to force other applications to use the Tor network, either by manually configuring them or using programs like Tallow that do it for you, but since any unencrypted information that you send or receive can still be seen by exit nodes, some users have tried using virtual private networks, or VPNs, which you can learn more about here, by the way, in conjunction with Tor, to create an encrypted tunnel at every point of the connection. Not a bad solution, as long as you can trust your VPN provider not to keep tabs on you. Of course, though, the best idea is not to send anything personally identifying over Tor or anywhere if you can help it. Tor also has the limitation of being a rather slow network, so it might not be too useful for downloading large amounts of, you know, stuff, uh, streaming in 4K or using BitTorrent, especially the latter, as the BitTorrent protocol can broadcast your IP address if you aren't careful. Nevertheless, though, Tor is still a great help to activists, uh, victims of crime, and people who are just plain concerned about preserving personal privacy in an age where it feels like we can always be watched. Tor may not be perfect, but it is a good first line of defense against aggressive advertisers, shady government shenanigans, or, you know, Skynet. Speaking of online security, TunnelBear VPN lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as though you were in that different country. And of course, if you clicked on the explanation of VPNs that I referred to earlier in this video, you would already know that. 
Ah, they have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. They also have a Chrome extension. You just choose the country that you want. You click the little virtual button and boom, your little bear tunnels over to wherever it happens that you want to be tunneling through. When you turn on Tunnel Bear, your connection gets encrypted and your public IP address gets switched so that you can show up as though you are in a different country, letting you bypass stupid things like uh, geographical region restrictions. Super thumbs up. It's also easy to use. You don't have to do any of that, you know, port configuration and DNS or blah, blah, etc. nonsense. It's so easy that your mom could use it. And they have a top rated privacy policy and do not log their users' activity. So you can actually try out Tunnel Bear for free with 500 megs of data included. And you can save 10% on your unlimited package, which only costs a few bucks a month, by heading over to tunnelbear.com slash Linus, linked in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you want to check out our other channels, hey, go ahead and do that. We've got Channel Super Fun, which we've had some pretty rocking videos on lately. Maybe we've got one over there to show you. If you have suggestions for future Fast as Possible, leave them in a comment below the video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff so you don't miss any other tech quickies.